Hello, my name is Dr. Michael Johnson, and today I'll be talking about the case for 3D cell culture models. Over the last five years, 3D cell culture models have gained popularity due to their ability to better mimic the in vivo microenvironment compared to traditional 2D cell culture models. But a lot of researchers don't yet understand exactly the benefits of 3D cell culture models, and the purpose of this presentation is to give you an example of a situation in which a 2D cell culture model would be inadequate for addressing a specific type of drug discovery research question, whereas a 3D cell culture model is able to accurately depict and answer that research question. In this case, our case study is primary breast tumor 3D model screening. We're looking at primary cells from Solaria, the wood cell line, which are primary breast cancer cells, grown into 300 micron spheroids. The cells were labeled with DAPI, NUQ for apoptosis, live dead for detection of dead cells, and KI67 for proliferating cells. Compared the 2D adherent to traditional 3D through this assay, and the spheroids were analyzed using our three screen proprietary fast radial symmetry transform segmentation approach. There's lots of ways to segment data, but one of the challenges with spheroids is because you have cells in multiple Z planes, you have to have an appropriate segmentation approach to not double count or undercount cells within your model. On this slide, I'm showing a 3D cell culture model using the wood cell line that's approximately 250 microns in diameter that's labeled with these four markers. And what you see between the vehicle control on the left and the one nanomolar of fulvous strand on the right is that fulvous strand affects cell proliferation in these 3D cell culture models, which can clearly be seen from the Z-production image, which is collected using high-content confocal microscopy. On this slide, I'm showing a representative segmentation result from DAPI and then dead cells, which are red, and apoptotic cells, which are green. And what we're able to do through counting all the cells within our population, we're able to figure out what percent of those cells are dead and what percent of those are apoptotic using the fast radial symmetry segmentation approach that I described previously. On this slide, we're showing a side-by-side -side comparison between 2D and 3D cell culturing techniques with the exact same cell line, which in this case is the Solaria wood breast cancer cells. What you see on the bottom here is that for a number of small molecule drugs from our screen, and these are just a few that are selected, we look at them and what we see is there's a big difference between the results that we get from traditional 2D cell culture models and 3D cell culture models. The 3D cell culture models in red we see for fulvous strand have a very significant effect, whereas with our uh, blue, the 2D cell culture models, the effect of fulvous strand is very minimal. The opposite is seen with cisplatin, where the effect with our 2D cell culture models models is very high, but the effect with our 3D cell culture models is barely noticeable. So what we're seeing is that there's a differential response based upon 2D versus 3D. And what I'll show in a few slides is one of the reasons for this is that the expression of biomarkers is very different between 2D and 3D with the exact same cell line. For example, with Fulvostrant, which is an ER targeting drug, in 3D these models do express ER, whereas in 2D they don't, which partly explains this differential result with Fulvostrant. This slide slide reiterates the results from the previous slide, but is looking at dead cell count for 2D versus 3D. And again, what we see is that when grown in 2D versus 3D, the results are quite different. For carboplatin, cisplatin, and tamoxifen, we see greatly different results between 2D and 3D. And again, this is just because our 2D model is not recapitulating the features of our in vivo model. And because of that, we see differential response between the more indicative 3D model and the traditional 2D cell culture model. On this slide, I'm showing this with ER expression. So you see the ER expression in our 3D cell culture model. On the left here, we see ER, whereas when we look at our standard 2D cell culture model with the exact same cell line, we do not see the ER expression. And this is really important because it demonstrates that we are not getting the same um, expression response that we see in vivo within our traditional 2D cell culture model. So if you would run your assay with a 2D cell culture model using this wood cell line, the results would be very very far off from what you'd predict to see in vivo. And when we transfer our assay over to a 3D cell culture model in this context, we get a much better predictive test of what's going to happen in vivo. And switching to a 3D cell culture model, while more expensive in this context, is going to result in a better translation between our in vitro and our in vivo results, and ultimately reduce the cost of our drug discovery program.